there was no time for me of a career before technology. I've been I've been working in tech for 30 plus years. So, but um, but but the truth is, it's so funny. Often people will ask me, so you know, what makes you passionate about tech? And the answer is, I'm not. I come from a low income background, uh, and I needed a job. And when I left school, even without a college degree, I was making two times what both of my parents made combined. So that is what drew me to computers and technology. Yeah, I mean, I think my favorite part about working in tech is, is being able to invent things, right? It's this moment of, of, aha, wait, nobody's actually figured out how to do this. If I can figure out how to do it in a way that is new, different, creative, more effective, like I can invent something new. It's like every, every day is the new frontier. Every day you can actually, you can make change and you can actually, you can craft and create new stories and areas and products and projects. So I think that's ultimately at the end of the day, what I really most enjoy about it. Uh, so I ran uh, digital at BET, the television network uh, for Viacom. I've spent the bulk of my career kind of at that at the intersection, at the hard intersection between uh, media and technology. So I actually uh, worked on the first time the web moved that the, we introduced animation to the web uh, with Shockwave in the 90s. And I've kind of been on the edge of of where media and tech intersect. And I helped launch Hulu, uh, and then I ended up working at a television company too. And there were, there were more video companies in between too, but. Look, I've been fortunate enough to work on some things that were pretty transformative, some pretty transformative technologies that really kind of changed the way people interface with the web or consumed media. And being able to have the opportunity to do that, not just at scale, but also for things that really matter and can impact the most kind of underserved uh, communities. I think that ultimately getting the chance to do that was, was pretty amazing. I served as the Chief Digital Service Officer for the U.S. Department of Education. Uh, I worked there from 2015 to 2017. Yeah, one of the things that I'm really proud of is we worked on something called College Scorecard, uh, which actually was about helping students make informed choices about what make a, what would make a good school for them. So it was a, a President Obama has it, had it as an initiative that they announced in that he announced in 2013. Uh, and really, right, there's all kinds of ranking systems out there and they were measuring things like uh, like how much money your alumni had donated or what new buildings there were. Uh, as opposed to looking at metrics of access, affordability, and outcomes, right? So what is the graduation rate of the school? Uh, what is the graduation rate by socioeconomic um, uh, um, level? What, um, what are the earnings after you attend that school? What is the repayment rate on loans? How much might, money might you have to take out? And then will you be able to earn enough after you leave to pay off those loans? So kind of helping people understand and look at uh, at the different kinds of metrics that might make uh, one school a better choice for them. So uh, so that was College Corker. I'm really, really proud of that work. Uh, and actually, it has been credited in just over three years with having improved college graduations in the rate in the U.S. by uh, a point and a half. One of the funny stories for me is, you know, when you come out of private sector and come out of technology, you are focused on doing user-centered design. Uh, and so, you know, when we, uh, when we were there and I was trying to figure out like how I could actually talk to students and I didn't know anybody in DC and, and how could we actually get to college aid students and their parents. Uh, and somebody was like, oh, well, we could go out to the mall. And I was like, oh my God, that's brilliant. The mall where the students, hang, where, the, where the kids hang out, the movie theaters are, and they were like, or the mall right outside the building, the Washington Mall. Uh, and uh, we actually did go out there and ended up kind of accosting people uh, coming out of the Air and Space Museum. And we were able to successfully talk to a number of different, again, parents, students, uh, all kinds of different groups and age ranges, which was, which was fantastic. We came back in really excited uh, and we had to share with the rest of the department uh, about what we had found in our learnings. Uh, and we sat down to talk about it. And somebody said, wait, you, you talked to more than nine people? That's illegal. 
we were like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, what now? Are you, am I going to jail? Uh, and so it turns out there's something called the Paperwork Reductions Act, uh, which people often misinterpret to mean that you are, cannot do user research, um, but that is in fact, in fact, uh, the folks uh, who put out, I think it's Wyra, who put out uh, the PRA, are in fact supportive of user research and it can be done, but it was just a very um, jarring response and reaction. Again, I think this was my first week in federal government and I was like, I don't know what's happening here. While I went to Brown University in Ivy League school, uh, it took me 24 years to graduate from college. Um, I was a Pell Grant recipient. Um, and so some of this story about, uh, about perseverance and figuring out how to do school in a way that's going to work for you, I think uh, was really resonant to me personally. Um, I think, you know, the, as I became kind of imbued in the Department of Education and the projects and what we were working on, you know, the, the reason why College Scorecard, for example, is such an important project is, you know, is learning that the value of a degree from a four-year institution is worth more than a million dollars over the course of your lifetime. Uh, and so understanding that coming out right in this day and age, everybody's talking about like, ah, you can be a tech startup, you can just kind of like college, if you're a computer scientist, you can do it. Uh, but the answer is truthfully, if you are black, um, that is not necessarily the case. And so kind of understanding the striking this balance between entrepreneurship and then actually making sure that you have the support and the reinforcements behind it, I think is really critical. And so again, it spoke to me on an additional level about how important college education is for our community, my community, um, in ways like beyond me, um, but, uh, but especially kind of within the tech industry that kind of has a different narrative. Uh, and then thirdly, and absolutely not lastly, so again, we did all of this use research. Uh, and one of the things that we did was we went and talked to uh, a public high school in Anacostia in DC um, and just spoke with school counselor, uh, the school counselor there and a number of uh, students. Uh, and just, you know, one of the, one of the, one of the features within college scorecard is we ended up doing um, how much you would have to pay in loans uh, on a monthly basis because as we were talking to the students, they were like, hey, I spend $150 a month on sneakers every month. The, the thing that that brought home for me was being able to talk in real world scenarios and things that were relevant to them and, and made sense or parallel to other things that they had done in their lives and how that same kind of investment could have such a big impact on their future um, in terms of going to college and, and, and what that investment in themselves could look like as opposed to just in their sneakers. Yeah, so I am the CEO and founder of a company called Techquitable. We are using technology to make workplaces more equitable. Uh, and really our mission is to help organizations and companies create work culture that's gonna work for everyone. And a lot of the reason I'm doing that actually stemmed from some of the things that I learned in government. Um, as I said, the idea of, of having worked on some pretty transformative technologies, but for me, it was really in government that I that we really could harness technology to solve what we had previously thought of as intractable problems, right? How do you make societal level change? How do you make systemic change? And so as I, as I was leaving the administration and trying to decide what I want to be when I grow up, because it's a journey, um, I was like, look, if we can send a Tesla Roadster into outer space, maybe we can use some of those same best practices and innovative strategies right here on our home planet to solve some of the issues for the underserved, the underrepresented, and the underestimated. And so that's how Techquitable was born. Yeah, you know, so when I was contemplating joining the government, uh, Todd Park, who was the former CTO of the United States of America, said to me, you will never do something that has so much impact at such scale. Um, and I think that that's, that's ultimately, that's exactly it. That's, that's the truth. Um, it really is an opportunity for you to do good um, in ways that are meaningful and moving and can affect real change. Oof, uh, absolutely, like I honestly, like as, sir, as, as long as there is one person who is unhoused in this country or one person who is going hungry or 
two little girls who have to sit outside of a Taco Bell to get wireless, uh, to get internet. Like there is, there is so much work that still needs to be done for us as a country as well as within government.